Hi, this is the long version of the reviewing of the paper deduplicating training data makes language model better. First of all, um, I think the author uh, addressed a very interesting scenario, which is that there are lots of duplicates between the training and the validation or testing set. What, do, what, what does that mean? It means um, you can see the you see here um, given the wikipedia 40b data set you can see on the left and right they're almost exactly uh, duplicate between the two sentences um, but there are many many cases of this in the training textual data set and the author found that um, what they're trying to do is they try to remove the duplicates and they find a very interesting result. Uh, first of all, it reduced the emitting memory rise in training data. It means um, so once compare to your original model with a model that is without duplicates or remove the duplicates. But this model is asked to be to generate some textual output. There, they found that there are still lots of uh, textual sentences that is exactly the same as the training set. For example, I have, it, they could generate um, this, I have money. And they found that in the training set, there are many, many, I have many money sentences, which is something that the natural language generation researchers are trying to avoid because Sometimes they want a paraphrase uh, generation other than just the directly duplicate what's being said in the training set. And they find that um, when they remove the duplicates, that the model is possibly or very unlikely to generate the exact uh, duplicate sentence in the training set. Otherwise, it could generate something I have financial freedom. Yeah, it's like a paraphrase, another way of saying one thing, right? Um, and the thing, uh, the second part, second important thing they found out is uh, very interesting to me uh, because I am not an NLP researcher. I work in the, the speech recognition domain. And then in the speech recognition, everybody knows that uh, you have to have a language model. Even you do the end to end, you have to have an external language model. Right? So when you train this language model, it's very similar to what they're doing. It's all about ngram, how to model the ngram probability. Right now, people are doing the uh, RNLM stuff, right? And uh, you can see um, and lots of uh, people are arguing whether the language model should contain the duplicates in the training set, okay? whether it should be trained from the, the, the duplicated training set or the, the original training set or the deduplicated training set. Because um, I think the common uh, sense is that if your your training set has a lot of duplicates like this, um, your language model might be um, the weights are gonna be more prone to give higher probability scores to this and gram, right? 
worm is always like this. This is an engram. Every model is all about engram probability. So you can see that uh, when you have a lot of duplicates, uh, this corresponding probability or frequency count it got bigger than it's supposed to be, right? And then in the testing scenario, it's going to be reviewed as a overfitting cases. But a lot of people are saying that, and other people are arguing that the Eleven model should train with the duplicate samples. Because why? Um, the interesting thing is that in the training and the testing set, there are lots of duplicates, like people mentioned here. Um, one thing is that uh, it's very hard to avoid no overlap between the training test set uh, because take the three gram for example I think lots of people are saying this I I, I, th I think that this is for instance, for instance this is a very very common three gram uh, if you say the test set shouldn't appear this three gram uh, as the training set it probably make people to say more unnatural sentences other than freely express their uh, feelings so people don't want the test set to be unnatural so this is why to lots of people especially people who work uh, who, who are working in the industry they are okay with the overlap between the training set and test set. And in this scenario, having, when, when, when this engram got emphasized, it is not a bad thing when the test set also appeared in this same engram, okay? Because then the, the frequencies are, um, are not, uh, higher than they should be. It's red okay. And the third thing they're talking about is um, because they remove the data, then the training time is uh, smaller. That makes sense. And they're talking about the environmental stuff, carbon emission stuff. And the fourth thing I think is the most interesting part of this paper. They say deduplicating does not hurt the perplexity. And how, it, how, is, that, how is that? Um, let's look at that. Well, um, I do think before I'm moving on to the perplexity stuff, I, I do think the authors should try their deduplicated tr training set uh, we're using that set to train new model and try it on different downstreaming tasks other than just compare the language model perplexity. Why? Because um, I am not an NLP researcher, but for speech recognition, when your language model perplexity changes going up and down, that's that, that does not always correspond to the word error rate goes up and down. So this is why uh, in, in speech recognition, you see a lot of people, they're trying to optimize the language model, but they always try to uh, optimize the language model from the perspective of word error rate, other than just a, uh, number more perplexity only, but but it, it, um, generally speaking, if you can uh, reduce the, the perplexity of the language model by a large amount, say ten percent or even twenty percent, 
you're you're gonna get roughly well two to five percent reduction in the word array according to my experience and sometimes you say suppose i reduce the perplexity of five percent and somehow you didn't see the change in the WER. Okay, so this is why I think the, the author should give uh, the downstream task a try to see how, see how it work, works working. See that they're saying that they're not focusing on the downstream task, okay? Um, let's take a look at um, the algorithm. Uh, you may ask how these uh, people do the de 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 duplication. I think there are two things they tried. The first thing is called the uh, exact substring duplication. That's simple, right? Um, all they have to do is to decide or define the length of the minimum matching substring length. And they set it that to 50. The 50 to me is pretty long. I am not a computer programmer. So the suffix array, and the, they talk about using this to build a suffix array. I think they eventually come up with a tree or something, right? They can see, give an example, they're doing this but another word and the, when they're getting all the suffix of this word, and they're getting banana, anana, nana, anana, nan, a. Actually, they're not doing the in the letter level. They're doing the in the um, word piece level, right? Or BP tokenization. But then they do this uh, substring matching. And I'm not interested in this. But I guess this the, they, they mentioned that they use some black box. I think everybody can use this. This is a pretty mature algorithm. Not gonna introduce this any. Um, approximate matching with mean hash. I, I learned this mean hash from this paper. Okay, it's interesting. Um, so in this way, they're saying that. Um, Besides, so given I have money sentence, if you say I have monkey, so this is more like a near match, but this is are the same, but this is, a, this are not the exact same. So other than just compare letter by letter, uh, they use a hash based method. And the, First of all, they define this a uh, record index. You can see it's very clear. This is about the, the overlap. This is the overall uh, letters. It's a percentage of overlap, I think. And then they construct estimators of this index. That's interesting. See the reference over here. And uh, they actually, they use uh, come up with a probability of the match. And uh, once they come up with this, uh, they define the editing, this similarity between two token sentences. Okay. And then they are going to be able to cluster similar documents together, find out which two documents are fairly near to each other. They, I think this time they still set the length of the sentence or the 50, 50 tokens. Uh, the duplication results. I think this is fairly interesting, interesting to me. And you can see that in table two, they showed the near duplicate scenario. And you see C4. I'm not sure whether you, you guys are familiar with C4. C4, I think I learned C4 from TensorFlow, right? It's a, it's a database from it. I think it's mostly, you also mentioned this, right? Let's see. 
you see I'm not an NLP researcher. I have to double check what is C4. The authors are very nice. They, they tell you what is, okay, it's called this. Also you claim common call. I think this is a very large database, I think. Yeah, C4, yeah, I remember this. C4 is used to train the famous model T5, okay? Very, very large database. I think Wikipedia 40B is not big compared to C4. That's, correct me if I were wrong. And also the 1 billion word benchmark, I used this database before. It's not big either. Uh, way smaller than C4. Um, real news, this is new to me. Uh, whether that's bigger and less than, than C4, let's see. Real news. They have a 31 million documents times uh, 793 BPs per documents on average. Okay. And the C4 is 360 million times 400. A6 BP. Yeah, I think C4 is a, at least a two magnitude bigger than, way bigger than real news. Okay. Yeah. So then we move back to here, then you can see that um, the big data set. C4, given the training set only, you can see within the training set, there are about 3% duplicates. And uh, compared with the validation set, and the, you can see they have a two-way duplicates, right? First is uh, given one sentence, is there a duplicate in validation set? But this percentage is 1.6. And also given a, a sentence in the validation set, is there a duplicate in the training set? And this percentage is higher, 4.6. And this, I think this is a bigger problem uh, compared to the other way around. Suppose you have a more duplicates in training set regarding the validation set. I think this scenario is more severe because you can see the validation set means it has a lot of uh, same case in the training set that will cause the model to be more likely to overfit. Say this thing gets up to 50%, that will be disaster. Okay. This is most likely a training overfitting model. This call this cause overfitting. Overfitting. <clears throat> and this is near duplicate um, case. And you can see uh, for the exact duplicated case, the C4, you can see um, there are less amount of uh, duplicates in the training set. But this is the data, right? But I would also be interesting to see. I, I mean, just I'm just I'm I'm personally interested to see the duplicates between different data sets. For instance, you know that the validation set of LM one B versus the C four training set. Because later on, the authors do have experiments on calculating the complexity of LL1B validation set using the C4 model. Okay. I think, yeah, they talk about it. Let's mention it. Yeah, uh, if you look at the figure two, I think this is a very, very interesting figure. I like it. And uh, what are those things mean? Okay. First of all, perplexity. I think I talk too much about perplexity. But those of you who are not 
familiar with perplexity? Or people, you're suppose you're not in the machine learning domain. You can just regard it as, as a measure of, of uncertainty. So think about the, 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 the machine learning or classification issue, right? Uh, you want the output selections or the softmax to have less confusability as possible, aka reduce the perplexity output given the test set. So you want your training model to have a minimum perplexity or minimum level of uncertainty. Right. This also uh, relates to the, the concept of entropy. If you're a, a, a guy from the physics domain, you know what I'm talking about. It's also a certainty, right? <clears throat> okay, and uh, for C, so for the top three rows, it's train on C4, test on C4 validation set. And the, the three color means you train using the original data set, and the, the green one means that you trained after removing the near duplicates, and you trained after you remove the exact uh, duplicates. Okay, then you can see after you do this uh, removal procedure, then you can see on the original C4. Validation set. The three models doesn't perplex. It doesn't change very much. Uh, I think it makes sense to me. The near duplicated scenario gets a little bit higher perplexity. You can pause the video and see, think about why. Um, for the C for duplicates, that means they deliberately find <laughs> the duplicates in the validation set and calculating the perplexity on it. Of course, the exact substring model or the near duplicate model, the practice gets higher. You know? it's, it's, a, it's a way underfit scenario. And it's going to have a greater uncertainty. Okay. And then once you remove the duplicates from the validation set, you can see again, uh, these three level marks perplexity doesn't change much or roughly the same. And of course, the, the, when you're using the exact uh, the, the, the blue scenario, you get a slightly lower perplexity that makes sense to me. And what is more interesting or more important to, um, to, to the community is that when you train on the C4 with the, these three settings and you test on the other two uh, type of scenario, for instance, L1B validation, you can see that, and also the wiki for PDF40B, you can see in both scenarios, removing the duplicates can get you lower language model perplexity. This is common sense. Why? Pause the video and think about 10 seconds. Okay. Because, like I mentioned before, having duplicates would ask the model to emphasize the same scenario using some weights. So that means the model is tuned to those duplicated scenarios. But it's very likely that in the LM1B and the Wikipedia 40B do not have these duplicated scenarios. So this is why once you remove the duplicates, your model can better learn the generalized, can be generalized. Think about, remember the word generalized. Generalized. What do I mean by that? That means it, or less overfitting, or 
the model can better get a get a better posterior probability I think uh, remember let me use the analogy here uh, remember you, you will do the SVM uh, you're, you're all about learning the hyper classification plan right uh, when I say the model gets generalized, so say a, say a SVM model gets generalized, that means the hyperplane is properly tuned or adjusted. So it would work on better on the unseen cases or mis mismatched cases, less likely to be overfitted to the known cases. Okay. Model perplexity is finished. Yeah, I think this is also interesting, but not that interesting to me is the generation part. NLG generation. Because I'm not working the TTS stuff. So I'm less interested in this one. But I think lots of people are interested in that. Suppose you're working the customer service. You're supposed to have a AI customer service agent. Then you care about your general gener generated text. Okay. And they show that uh, suppose you have already trained a model, then you can either uh, prompt the model with nothing or something. Okay. Something. And then you expect the model to generate some text. <clears throat> and the, the result is, um, I think it's also still within my common sense. And they're saying that, <clears throat> suppose you, first of all, no prompt, okay? They're saying that they can if you don't prompt anything, then model generates something. Then they find that the probability of the generated sentence to be a duplicate, duplicate sentence in the training set reduced up by 10% compared to the baseline, which means uh, by removing the duplicates in the training set, they're capable of reducing the memorization issue. Yeah, they don't want the model to memorize the, the sentence in the training set. And uh, they're saying that once you, and this is the, the, the scenario without do, the prompt, suppose you, you, you fed in um, a prompt and they say, suppose you, you give a, a train a duplicate appeared in training set as a prompt. Then you can see, it makes sense, right? If you're using the original model, it's very likely for you to have a duplicate. And the, but once you uh, train with the near duplicate and exact uh, duplicate configuration, then this probability got reduced by a great amount. And also, even you, the interesting thing to me is that even you fed in a prompt that is um, not appeared in the duplicates in the training set, there's still likely to be a, to have a chance that this generated sentence to be a duplicate in the training set. Why is that? Um, if anybody knows please comment in the YouTube uh, comment section because I need your guidance too. But, but, but this, this probability is very low. And you can see that um, you remove duplicates can further reduce the duplicates probability. Okay. Um, before I move on to the conclusion part, I want to take a look at the, the 
appendix section. This I duplicates uh, algorithm details. Not interesting. I think this one is interesting. So this gives you a thought or idea about in, in the, the four data sets that's mentioned in this paper, how likely a string can have a duplicate in the training set. And this set, the, the, the threshold of a duplicate should be 50. That means anything that a duplicate is only a duplicate when there are more than 50 cases of duplication. And you can see that um, one, when the matching length is less than 10, less than 10 word piece tokens, I think that's about roughly about five words, five, or five, five words, there are lots of duplicates. You can see that the, the, the probability of a duplication is 1%, very high. And you can see once the, the matching lens gets longer, say a thousand tokens, which is about 500 words, there are still chances of getting duplications. See, especially the real news case. You still have uh, 10 to the minus 4 of probability to get a duplicates and 50 duplicates. Talk about the energy consumption. Um, this is too much numbers for me. I'm going to skip this. Distribution of memorization. Interesting now. Okay. Yeah, th th this one, I think there are some uh, uh, detailed ablation studies. I'm going to skip this one. So let's move on to the conclusion. So you can see that they say that the future number model research should perform data set duplication. I agree, yeah. And uh, they are also saying that uh, the method to use or to perform duplication, duplication is not that important because you can see that uh, e either near duplication or exact duplication, it can all reduce the number model perplexity in the for the unseen scenario, the, they're roughly the same, right? And also, deduplication does not harm the language model perplexity. It can even uh, it actually reduce the language model perplexity and the language model perplexity. And it's faster to train. And the author also mentioned that <laughs> Uh, it's very important that there are new duplicates between the training and test set because this encourages the model to be overfitted or memorizing the training data. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.